Our uh, LoRaWAN solution is primarily uh, the network server and uh, for uh, to, to run and operate a LoRa-based uh, network. And uh, it's composed of a, a, what we call a network server which implements all the MAC functions for uh, uh, the LoRaWAN standard. And on top of it, we have uh, what we call an operations and maintenance server, among other features, which implements uh, a number of advanced tools for the management of, uh, of, a, of a network based on LoRaWAN. We really support all the, all the verticals in our case. Being a network server provider, we work with uh, solution providers in the most diverse applications and public networks as well, which have uh, a very large number of applications. So that we, we need to be agnostic, I guess, from uh, a vertical point of view. The use cases that our customers implement range from the usual uh, smart parking, smart metering, for example, applications in agriculture, but uh, we have uh, uh, some interesting applications as, as well, uh, in, uh, in, uh, or more unusual, let's say, applications in terms of uh, water quality monitoring, for example, in the canton of Geneva, and some applications in terms of noise pollution monitoring. Uh, where you uh, really control in real time the, the noise level in, uh, in a big city, uh, which is uh, actually subject to regulations in many places in Europe and also in Switzerland. Many people like to talk about the radio technology. I'm a radio technologist by, by training and by uh, early experience, but uh, it's uh, really primarily by the value of the, the ecosystem and the alliance itself. It's a tremendous value uh, and, uh, and I would say it would be the main reason why we are part of this. I would say LoRaWAN compares very well with these technologies. I come from uh, the cellular industry myself and uh, you know, I know that one challenge for the cellular industry now and it will be a challenge in the next five years will be to really meet the cost structure that is necessary uh, to deploy the billions of devices that we all keep talking about. And to really do uh, this, uh, you know, really uh, uh, large mass deployment of uh, Internet of Things applications, there will need uh, to be a cost structure that right now is, is not there for the cellular industry and it's actually available there right now for LoRa. And the second advantage I think that we can bring to the table from that point of view is the time to market part of it. The fact that uh, uh, LoRa is there now and LoRa One is available now with all the uh, key building blocks of the value chain. And so these solutions can be deployed right now. I would say, without exaggerating, it's uh, really the most important aspect of, uh, of the LoRaWAN technology and uh, the ecosystem itself and the alliance itself. I think I might say also that the LoRa Alliance people, people working in the alliance itself, have done a super job actually organizing these events. And uh, the, the main strength of LoRa and LoRa One is actually the ecosystem itself and the alliance itself. And um, it's been very invaluable for us actually to come to these events and uh, uh, networking with people. That we found valuable partners and customers in this way, right? So it's uh, really keep it up. I would say that there will be a big impact uh, in, uh, in the beginning, actually in the next uh, two to five years, actually we'll see a lot of the objects that we use in our daily lives connected to the internet. And uh, a good portion of this, actually some people think that uh, up to uh, three or five billion devices, depending on the estimates, will be connected to the internet via low power wide area networks like LoRa. And uh, in the long term, well, we will see actually more and more intelligence coming into these applications. And, uh, uh, I would say that many of these applications will become uh, seamlessly integrated in our daily lives and in our society over time.